Hello everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Dominic Wombacher and I talk about Pagger CI with AWS Code Pipeline. That's at least what I submitted. During the talk you will figure out that things get a bit sidetracked, but it's still interesting. Um, if you want to reach out to me, a couple of contact details over there. Um, yeah, currently I work as Partner Solution Architect at AWS, but other than that, um, I'm still an engineer, so Solution Architect is more theoretical under normal circumstances. I have the pleasure to be still pretty hands-on. Um, open source contributor, so that means I do some bug fixes and features from time to time. Bit of packaging for Fedora, OpenSUSE, um, maintainer of some projects. Pagger is one of them. Neil Gompa over there is another maintainer. I'm a dog person and I'm a dad. And I work pretty hard that Linus is also into Geekos. So um, yeah, looks like he likes them. So, <laughs> Pagger. Um, who heard about Pagger before? One, one, one. Whoops. <laughs> okay, let's uh, start with some facts then. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Pagger is actually a community git forge. So um, I, I would really say it's, uh, or would describe it as lightweight, hackable, um, extensible, and, and also scalable. So lightweight, and so technical details in a couple of slides, but lightweight because it's really focused on the whole git part, right? So it's not uh, super feature heavy, it really focuses on what it's supposed to do, right? Hackable, um, because it's a Python, it's based on Python, and personally I think this is a really low barrier to entry when you want to contribute to something, because Python is fun um, and it's easy to do. Um, we have a plugin system, so I'll talk about that in a minute, and um, it's scalable, even though today the standard deployment isn't, but we talk about that as well. So, it's interesting that so much of you never heard about Pagger before because it's around since a while, as you can see, 10 years, more than 10 years actually. Some fun facts, a lot of comments since then, more than 200 contributors. Latest release um, was end of May, so not that long ago, and uh, Neil and I aim for a new major release in Q4, <laughs> whatever this is supposed to mean. We say before Christmas, actually. Um, and probably you already used Pagger somehow, because um, it powers code open source org, sort of Fedora project, so you might already interact it um, with Pagger. As mentioned, the tech stack is Python focused, so it's basically a Flask application. Um, Celery is used as, um, yeah, for, for workers to have asynchronous. Um, Execution of your of your works, uh, of your tasks, and then libgit, pygit. This is really the whole core of it. So every interaction with git happens through that. Um, yeah, Redis. Um, that's actually how our workers um, get their jobs. But as you re know, recently there were a bit of a change in Redis licensing, so we're going to move to Valky. Um, that being said, when we say we move to that, it's not that. Nothing else is supported or works, but from our perspective, what do we test in our integration tests? It will actually be Valky. Um, but overall, everything that's Redis compatible is supposed to work. Um, database, um, Postgre, MySQL, uh, MariaDB, um, because we use SQL Alchemy under the hood, so as ORM, as abstraction layer. Um, you can also set up a dev um, system based on SQLite. That works as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I told you how cool Pagger is, but there are also some challenges. Um, so it took more than two years to go from um, uh, 513 3, so the latest version, to the newest version we recently released. Um, and actually, that's mainly caused by a pretty low amount of, of active contributors. So I hope that I can convince a couple of you today to contribute to Pagger in the future, um, and technical depths. Um, throughout the years, um, of course, I mean, things get a bit outdated, libraries get dated, um, so there's some work to do 
um, to clean things up, and also user experience. I mean, when Packet was built, um, things were different. I mean, people expect a bit more today from a pull request review, how does it work, you know, how you can interact with, with something. Um, so yeah, the UI is definitely something where we have to improve. But um, let's focus on the good things. Our plugin system. So Pagger has actually, when we talk about the plugin, it could mean two different things. <laughs> so it could be a hook. Um, and think about it, you have your, your project, you, you, and your project contains your Git repository, your issues, pull requests, all these things. And then a hook is um, basically something that interacts based on that project scope. And then you can have a full plugin, and that's basically limitless. So it's based on Flask blueprints. Um, so as said, scope is the project. And by the way, I share a lot of QR codes throughout the session, so that's my thing. So we we'll probably call me Mr. QR Code afterwards. Um, just to make it easier for you, so that one will lead you directly to the source code of the um, base hook class. So if you write a hook, um, you actually extend that base hook class. You either use the already defined methods or you overwrite them, and voila, then you have um, your own hook. So basically, you can have a hook for mail notifications, or our CI integration is a hook, for example. So, just waiting till David is done. Good. <laughs> oh, another QR code. Take a look. Because, um, as I said, so the other option is Flask Blueprints, where you can actually interact with anything in, in that application. Um, so, yeah, two environment variables um, if, if you want to interact with that. So, you need to define a configuration to, to let Pagger know, okay, this is how my blueprints are supposed to be loaded, find, to interact with them. And then um, you need to add your plugins um, to another environment variable. Too much uh, to dive into, but a good example how that's implemented is actually um, Pagger Dist Git. That's the package that sits on top of a regular Pagger installation for source.fedoraproject.org. So additional logic like orphaning a package or something comes from that um, blueprint. So I think this is a good reference, you know, when you want to understand how things can be implemented, take a look on that source code. So, um, additional CI types. I mean, the whole story today is actually about adding code pipeline to Pagger. Um, and to do that, we need new CI types. As mentioned earlier, Pagger CI itself is a hook. Um, it's implemented as a hook, which means that um, it's actually a plugin system inside a plugin system somehow, you know, because you have Pagger CI, which is uh, based on our base hook, um, and this loads other um, extensions that are in the actual CI. Um, so the logic is that salary triggers the CI, and to do that, um, it uses this trigger CI build method, and to create a new CI type, um, we have to create a new file under Pagger API CI, and then we name it. So I could say code pipeline.py. And then I have to ensure that I have at least one method which is called trigger underscore build. Because salary schedules the job and then expects that the CI plugin that I selected has this method and starts it. And from there, the actual CI type has to handle uh, the rest. So to send the job to the CI. Um, system and then to receive um, a feedback. And this is then exactly the point. So um, you need a bit more logic. So I send a request to code pipeline as example. At some point I need to get a response back. Uh, at, at some point the job either failed or is finished or whatever. So that's why you need um, a route where you can receive these informations. Um, and then you need to implement logic to actually handle that. Like, okay, I received that information from the pipeline. 
I update my pull request with um, fail pass or do something else. Um, so while preparing this talk, I figured, okay, we should improve that system a bit. So the first thing I did, and this is where the QR code leads to, um, that's the pull request to actually move all logic that we had for the Jenkins CI implementation, which was in Packer core, back to its plugin. So there was already this plugin structure, but there was still a mix. So there was still Jenkins related um, things in, in Packer core. So that was moved out. Um, and what I plan to do next is addressing this whole route problem. So I told you, okay, if you need, want your own plugin, you actually need handle routing and you handle the request that comes back. Um, but for me, that feels like a common problem. So whatever CI type you want to implement, um, you will always have to do this over and over again. So it's a shared functionality. So the next step is to, to centralize that as well. And then, when all that's done, um, you can actually build whatever integration you want. So today, Pagger comes with um, support for Jenkins. So you can just go ahead, configure Jenkins, everything is fine. But based on the already um, performed changes and the upcoming changes, you can attach every build pipeline that you want. So yeah, I, I work, I still work on the code pipeline thing, um, but you can also do source hot or whatever you want actually. So, um, speaking of code pipeline, um, who knows what AWS code pipeline is? <laughs> okay, 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 perfect. So, um, then just a bit high level theory. So, it's a managed service from, from AWS where you can actually define um, different stages and then assign actions to these stages. So that could be um, a standard pipeline. You get your source code, um, you build it, you have some staging, you might have an approval process. These are all the things that you can actually do with code pipeline. Um, so you can also interact with other AWS systems. You can say, okay, I use AWS code build to actually build my code. Um, that's a topic for a different talk actually, but just keep in mind, managed service and it can interact um, with external services, it can um, interact with AWS services. And the thing that I want to do with the plugin is um, to introduce short-term credentials. I think we all agree that having long-term credentials is a bad thing. I mean, they could leak at some point. Um, and when you run workloads on AWS, um, you have multiple options to actually receive temporary IDs, temporary tokens. Um, to our instance profiles and um, IAM for service accounts, nice name, um, it's also short IRSA. So who heard about these options? When you run something on AWS, you want temporary credentials, you want to authenticate. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm clear, good. Perfect, I have some slides for that. Um, okay, so let's assume you have an EC2 instance running, so that's virtual machine on AWS, basically. And then you define um, an instance profile, or an IAM role and a policy, where you say, okay, this machine is allowed to push data to an S3 bucket, for example. So I can push data to an object storage. I attach that policy to my EC2 instance, and then everything that runs on top of that EC2 instance can get temporary credentials. They are valid for, I don't know, a couple of hours or something. Um, so yeah, the, the good thing is, you know, even if they would be um, show up in log files or something in plain text, okay, still a bad thing, but they're going to expire really soon. So what are the containers here? Um, so I said everything that runs on that instance can get temporary credentials. Yes, this means containers as well. So if you run three different containers, um, 
all that container could technically get the credentials and then access your S3 bucket. That might be a behavior that you want. In most cases, probably not. Um, so I think instance profiles are really good um, when you have one application running and you want to grant this application a set of permissions. The other option is then um, service accounts. So you have a Kubernetes cluster, for example, and here in that diagram it's EKS, but it also works um, with an on-prem cluster that you have, or you could deploy a Kubernetes cluster inside AWS, so it doesn't have to be um, EKS as managed service. And then you connect with um, our EAM roles um, through a service provider, so AWS IAM, and then you have your provider. And then what happens is you configure your, your Kubernetes deployment, add an annotation, and say, okay, this service account is linked to a specific IAM policy at AWS. And that policy could, again, allow that I push to an S3 bucket. When I now start my, my pod, um, then only this service account has these permissions. So for example, I spin up five different pods, five different applications, and one application has that service user with the specific permissions to push to S3, then only this one pod can actually do it. The other four pods don't have these permissions. So that's the difference between I assign it to an instance and then everyone can do it, or I have it more granular and assign it to service accounts that are then linked to a pod. Speaking of um, Pagger and Kubernetes, right now, that's a classic Pagger deployment. A server, nice. Then you have your database, um, Valky, you have your um, salary workers, um, and that's it. So this is honestly how Pagger is mostly deployed these days um, with, an, with an RPM package. What we want to do in future is um, to have Pagger on, on Kubernetes. At the beginning, I talked about scalability, and yeah, um, Pagger can scale, but only if you deploy it in the right way. Um, so that could be a reference implementation, where you say, okay, I have my incoming traffic from the left um, through service, and then I could have two replicas for my actual Pagger server. And those share storage, so they, they have a central storage for database, for persistent data, for your Git repositories, and so on. And then on the right-hand side, we can have our salary workers. So I can have multiple replicas for them. I can assign my workers to different queues to actually prioritize activities. So I could say that, um, Forking a repository might not have the same priority as executing um, a CI job. Because, yeah, okay, I mean, if someone forks something, cool, but it's not the end of the world if it takes two seconds longer or something. But, you know, uh, I see some disagreement over there. <laughs> you want to get it done right away, yeah. You don't want to wait. Okay, I get that. So, yeah, but this is basically the idea, so that we can say, okay, we are pretty dynamic. We could even use um, built-in features from Kubernetes um, to do some auto-scaling based on uh, performance data and, and stuff like that. Um, and there is some work ongoing. Another QR code is coming. Um, so the first step is actually to build some Pagger containers and, and to build some manifest files because this was missing so far. I mean, yeah, we build RPM packages. <laughs> I think a microphone is coming. <laughs> we get there. <laughs> Uh, which Linux are you using with Python 3.9 here? 
<laughs> oh yeah. So, huh? I'm still at the OpenSUSE conference, right? <clears throat> um, okay. Yeah, 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 I, I, I know that. Okay, so let's let's start earlier. So right now, Pagger works pretty good on on Python three point nine. So until we sorted some of our technical depths out, we need it. And I'm building the containers on Alma Linux at this point because it comes with three nine, and then um, we go with a virtual environment. But in future, when we sorted out the technical depths, um, then you can run it on whatever, because then, then it works with the RPM packages that come with OpenSUSE, for example, um, then it's fine. So it's just an intermediate step at this point. All right, but thanks, thanks for that question. I was hoping that no one asked it. <laughs> Good. Um, okay, yeah, so part of the whole thing is also um, entry point scripts. Yeah, if you start a container, you need something that then starts your gunny corn process or whatever. Um, and in this phase, it will be just simple um, deployment manifests, general files um, that can be adjusted. So that's okay to get started. Um, but then the next step is to make that a bit more comfortable um, to use. So um, what we're going to do is there will be releases um, from Pagger uh, as pre-built containers on, on Quay IO. Um, the idea is to have a latest tag, and that latest tag is always matched to our master branch. So we merge it into master, we trigger um, the build, and then a bit later you, you have really the, the bleeding edge version of Pagger available on, on, on the registry, um, and then also release tags. So pretty classic. So we release Pagger, um, we release new container images. I think most more important is actually the Helm chart. Um, because, yeah, having manifest files is okay, but Pagger has a lot of configuration options, which is a good thing, but it's pretty hard to um, cover that in an appropriate way with just a plain vanilla manifest file. Um, so, yeah, there will also be a, a Helm chart at some point. Soon, I hope. All right, and uh, I guess the most important part today um, is actually how you can contribute. And, and by the way, I think you saw how the initial idea of my talk changed a bit to a journey to improve different things in Pagger with um, a more of a vision how we can actually run it on Kubernetes. So sometimes you just start with an idea and then it becomes much more of that. So um, how can you get started? Probably like I did um, a bit over, I think, two years or whatever ago. Yeah, um, start to use it. Install Pagger, figure out that not everything is perfect, and then help to fix it, help to improve it. Um, might sound stupid, but read the source code um, and the documentation. I mean, the documentation is okay, but could also use some love. Um, but source code never lies. So. <laughs> If you want to know something about the system, just, just take a look. Um, local testing, trust me. One of the most painful things I stumbled across. Um, when I started to contribute to Pagger, we were in a situation where local testing <laughs> required that every time you build the whole container with everything, like I install my packages from my operating system, and then I install all my other dependencies, and then I install Pagger, and that alone took half an hour, and then our integration tests another half an hour or something. So you wanted to just test one minor thing, and then you had to wait for an hour. It was not great. Um, last year, around OpenSUSE conference, we changed that. Um, so right now you can have pre-built containers, so you build it once on your local machine. Um, it's separated between the actual operating system and a container that then mounts the Pagger code, um, again, from your local system, if you want that. Um, and then you can also pass a specific test. So my workflow looks normally like, um, I change something, I run the full integration test, takes now 15 minutes, much better. Um, things will fail, and then I change something, and then I just run that one specific test 
that I was working on, you know, and then it just reduces to seconds, actually. I mean, you can run a test in 30 seconds, a minute or something. So yeah, that's um, actually how I would suggest to do that and start small. I mean, there's a lot to do. So I know that you're super excited to contribute to Pagger, but really just pick a small task, get familiar with Pagger, the code base. Um, and um, if you have questions about Pagger and when you develop it, um, reach out. I mean, Neil and I, we're hanging in the um, Pagger matrix room, um, QR code, so that one will lead you to that room. Um, you can also um, use the mailing list um, if you want that. And more important, and not a QR code, yeah. Um, good first issues. So we call it an easy fix. I was looking through them today. I'm not convinced that every one of them is easy, <laughs> but it's still a good first issue. Um, yeah, so, so different things. And as you can see on, on that random screenshot, there's, for example, um, obsolete installation instructions. So even if you're not super into Python coding, um, not a problem at all. I mean, then contribute to improving the documentation. That's a, a super valid use case. Um, and every help is appreciated. And I realized that I went pretty fast from my talk. Because we're at the point um, where I would like you to, to scan another QR code. Um, I, I promised that you, did you see that I like QR codes? Um, yeah, so that's a survey. So you can just um, scan the code, fill it out, let me know how you like the session, what I can improve. Um, so next time when I sign up for a 45 minute session, I should probably not be done after half an hour. I get that. So, um, and now it's time for questions. And I hope you have a lot of questions because there's some time left. Yeah. Um, thanks, Dominic. You mentioned that you have two main maintainers. Uh, is that correct? And if so, is that, do you think that's a healthy number? <laughs> Sorry, again, what? <laughs> you mentioned you have two developers for this project. Is that oh, correct? Oh, okay. Um, I guess we have, um, other people that contribute, but in that room, it's basically Neil and, and myself. So, yeah. Give, given what we, Okay, yeah, Duncan counts as well. <laughs> no, so, so uh, yes, um, I mean, it's just a handful, and this means we, have, we struggle with handling all the technical depth. So yes, that's why we would love to have more contributors, but it's not that bad, actually. David, you have to mic. Oh, what are what are some of the things that you think are are beneficial for SUSE in the in the in the Open SUSE community, right? God damn it! No, I mean it, it's pretty obvious. I mean, Pagger also powers CodeOpenSUSE.org. Um, that's one of the reasons why I recently um, joined the, the Heroes to to help them to actually with their Pagger instance. And I think this is what, what SUSE and OpenSUSE gets out of that. So when we improve Pagger, when we allow more integrations with pipelines, for example, or other types of plugins, um, that also allows the OpenSUSE project to integrate Pagger more in workflows that might be related to OBS or whatever. Any other questions? <laughs> So, uh, in the in the test instances you were creating, are are you generating a pod and then have it with multiple containers, or are you just working it through one container at this point? Oh, you mean the uh, local testing? Yeah. Yes. So it's basically you have a base container which includes um, all the packages that the Pagger is going to need, and then there is a, co a code container um, which actually mounts the Pagger code and triggers the test. And then it's basically a full set of integration tests. So it spawns Redis instances and then talks through them to um, a Unix socket. So it's not really just unit tests. Um, it's really a full integration test suite. Um, that's why also the, the testing takes quite some time. 
I have a hard one. So, <laughs> uh, Another one? Jesus. Um, I remember previously when we talked about scalability of Pagor, the problem was not with front-end scalability, but the Git storage scalability. So when you draw a picture, you say, talk about how we use scale workers, we scale pods, but the Git backend is still a single server, right? So is there any future there, or is it like better now? Uh, what's the story behind it? That's really a good and a hard question. So I know that there were some, some stuff around repo spanner to, to address that in the past. Um, so yeah, in that diagram it's really just one single storage um, with the assumption that it has um, appropriate throughput for the project. So again, from an AWS perspective, I would probably use EFS, so an, an NFS based storage. Um, we don't run any tests yet to see how much that scales. Um, but I think that will work pretty well to a certain extent. So yeah, I mean, it's nothing directly on the roadmap at this point. And honestly, I mean, giving back the hard question thing, with the decisions the Fedora project made around Pagger, um, it's not really easy to understand the real requirements, you know, and how we can address them. So feedback is, is definitely welcome. So if Pagger right now, um, hits any issues and can be addressed, then Neil and I would love to know more about that. All right, anyone else? Then, thanks a lot for your time. Enjoy OpenSUSE conference.